That's a logo I haven't seen for a long time. A long time. Welcome to Super Star Wars. Now this is something that some of my viewers might be a little young for, but uh, this game was a hell of a thing. Uh, I'm going to play it on easy because this game is plenty brave enough playing it on easy. Uh, this is one of the hardest games I think the Super NES has to offer. But, uh, Super Star Wars, well, uh, I'm taking a little break from playing uh, SD Gundam Cross Rays, so I thought I'd switch over to the American equivalent, I suppose, of, uh, of Gundam, which is Star Wars. And Super Star Wars is a weird thing. We're going to get right into it, and we're going to talk a lot about this as we play through. I do have one cheat going. It's Infinite Lives, and you'll see why. Oh, this is nostalgia for me. Man, I love this game. It's hard as balls, but I love it. I think uh, I think most of us are familiar with this title scroll. There's a period of civil war, rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil Galactic Empire. During the battle, rebel spies managed to steal secret plans to the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star. An armored space station with enough power to destroy an entire planet. Pursued by the Empire's sinister agents, Princess Leia races home aboard her starship, custodian of the stolen plans that can save her people and restore freedom to the galaxy. Yeah, that's th this is a pretty faithful retelling of the plot beats of Star Wars, but what happens in between them is Wackadoo bug nuts crazy. If you have never seen Super Star Wars, you are in for a time today. And I suppose a lot of people probably haven't seen Super Star Wars because it was a big thing when it first came out, and then eh, like it, it kind of after that generation wasn't really a thing. Look at that mode seven stuff just scrolling around. Hmm. Okay, and now we're just Luke Skywalker in the Dune Sea. We're on our way to go purchase a droid. And uh, we're immediately being dive-bombed by Minox, which are not native to this planet. They're just here, and they're they're trying to murder us. That lightsaber up there is our health bar. It's our health sword. We got scorpions. They fire small thermonuclear explosions from their tail. You'll notice that everything is attacking me constantly. Uh, I'm attacked... From, like, every possible angle in this game. There's more Minox up there trying to dive bomb and hit me. Uh, everything drops health, which is nice, at least at this point. They won't do that forever. There's a giant scorpion. It makes grabby hands. It fires nuclear explosions and splits into more scorpions. I don't remember any of this from the movie. Been a while since I saw the original Star Wars. But I don't recall this. Womp Rats. They, they are mentioned in the movie. Ow. Ow. This is a hell of a blaster, by the way, but it gets even better when we pick this up and now it shoots fireballs. Uh, this may be the blaster owned previously by Dash Rindar in our uh, Shadows of the Empire LP, and I'm pretty sure it is. It briefly falls into Luke Skywalker's hands for the duration of this game. Just the 532nd Womp Rat Division will pursue you for the entire stage, so... Oh, also sandworms? Who explode? Everything explodes in Star Wars... In Super Star Wars, I'm sorry. Everything explodes and everything wants to kill you. I think all Flame does, actually, is just make my gun do double damage, which is nice. Uh, if you die, you lose your gun upgrades, and you go back to the starting gun. Which means never die, or this game will be unbeatable. So I feel like this game is balanced around you having the most powerful gun possible. Oh, sandworm. Sandworm, scorpions, everything. 
Hearts uh, stay and bounce around on the ground for approximately one one thousandth of a second, and then they go away. So make sure you pick them up if you need healing. You, you don't actually sink all the way into this quicksand. It doesn't kill you or anything. It's like the only thing in the game that doesn't kill you. And if I'm going at a high speed talking about this, it's because this game is nerve-wracking and terrifying. All right, first boss. The Sarlacc. Remember the Sarlacc from the third movie? Well, he comes up out the goddamn pit to kill you here. Here's how you fight the Sarlacc on regular difficulty here. You just shoot him. He spits rocks at you. He comes out of the goddamn pit to kill you. I want to stress that. I think that's probably the best way to explain this game is Star Wars, but the Sarlacc comes out of his pit after your ass. Next time you pop up your mind, fucker. Come on. Come on. There you go. And then the Sarlacc explodes. Because everything in this universe is made out of gasoline. Alright. And that's one stage. We didn't die on that stage, because I practiced some, but... By God, I'm gonna die on some BS platforming later in this game. Over here. Hey, hey, help. Please help. I am C-3PO, Human-Cyborg Relations. Something terrible has happened. My counterpart R2-D2 has been captured by Jawas. We must find him. That did happen. R2-D2 did, in fact, get captured by Jawas. Uh, so did C-3PO, though. So we're gonna go find some Jawas. We're gonna go find him by murdering every Jawa we see. Here's how you drive in this. You use your thermal nuclear jets to blast yourself in the direction you want to turn. Because it's super goddamn Star Wars. Uh, there's a Womp Rat. They're much larger here. Uh, we're trying to kill Jawas, by the way. A thing which never happened in the movies. They're peaceful. We'll also shoot these moisture vaporators because they have jet fuel in them, I guess? Which gives us fuel for our land speeder for our jets. Mode 7 ass game. Mm, love it. Don't touch the oil pools. I don't know what they are, but they hurt. Also, don't run into rocks. Jawas are throwing grenades at us. There we go. We just kind of rammed him. Ah, get out of that, get out of that, that's bad, that's bad. Don't touch, don't touch, no touch. Yeah, they just yell Utini when they die, which is Jawanese for come here. So I don't know why they're yelling that. Here's how you get to the sand crawler. Go! Woo! Holy shit! This game's awesome. Okay, we made it to the Sandcrawler. We're outside it now. We get off to go besiege the Jawa fortress that is the Sandcrawler. That was a health sword we just picked up. It extends our health bar. I don't understand it either, but sure. Gotta take out all these deadly outer defenses that the damn Sandcrawler has. Bristling with turrets, of course. Understandable, considering this is the Super Star Wars universe. Oops. Oh, hang on. Oh, another health sword. Goody. Yes, I know, Arrow. Thank you. Uh, when you destroy mechanical things, that shrapnel flying off does hurt you, because this is super goddamn Star Wars. Now my gun fires homing missiles. Homing missiles, which are far larger than the gun, I would point out. Uh, regardless of anything at all, this is the best weapon in the game. Just full stop. There's nothing better than this. Uh, it is not the last weapon, but it is the best weapon, because it hits everything for you. It does not always hit implanted. Oh, great. Now I have to start over. I missed my jump, so now I'm screwed. That's how this game works. Uh, 
I should probably mention every jump in Super Star Wars, every single one, no matter where it is, is essentially tailor-made to make you shit your pants. You will never look or feel like you're going to make a jump successfully. Yes, I made it. Oh, thank God. Speaking of, like, jumps making you shit your pants, that one was a big one. Okay. This was my favorite part of the movie where Luke Skywalker besieged the Jawa Sandcrawler, by the way. And killed, like, eight trillion fucking Jawas. Ooh. Uh, of course, if you get hit by anything, you're gonna get knocked off the platform, so... Bear that in mind. Got a thermal detonator that destroys everything on screen. I'll, uh, demo that here. Sometimes useful, not that big a deal. There's a lot of jumping onto platforms you can't see in this game, which is terrible. But now I'm up here, so things should get a lot better. As I stop all these pop-up turrets on board the sand crawler here. Oh god. There we go. Ow, ow, I touched a piece of shrapnel from the turret. Press down while in the air there to fall in there, by the way, if you're playing this at home. Alright, that's the, what, third stage clear? Now it's time to lose our first life, because there is some instant death platforming inside the Sandcrawler. Out of the way, moisture farmer coming through. Your tears are full of moisture. Oh, shield. That's just invincibility. It's alright. Uh, most of the time you will die to instant death mechanics rather than actually taking damage, however, so it's not that big a deal. It doesn't last very long either. Especially in the early game, health is quite abundant. I'll take that. That gives me uh, rapid ions, which are pretty good. They do twice... I think every shot does like twice the damage of the previous shot. And these bounce. And apparently set off nuclear explosions. Which is cool. Like you do, you know. Alright. Got jumps. Yes, the Jawa Fortress Sandcrawler here is filled with weird turrets and traps and all kinds of nonsensical bullshit because it's super goddamn Star Wars. It is not regular Star Wars. There's a big difference, and you must understand that. Jawas, how do they navigate this place? Hell if I know, but they do. Okay, that thing is... Apparently immune to ions, which sucks. Oh, you have to get it at an angle, okay. I usually come through here with homing missiles because they're better at everything. But I want to showcase everything. Ooh, a health sword. Now I have more health in my health sword. Thankfully, these don't instantly kill you when you touch them. They just hurt. Like everything else in this game hurts. I do actually need some health at this point, though, amazingly. Ow, I touched a piece of shrapnel. I've never seen another game where just random pieces of crap off of enemies you defeated will mess you up. Gonk droid. Gonk droid has a fucking turret inside of him. Ow. Oh, God. Okay, okay, I have to... No. Oh, my God, I hate it. There you go. Friggin' gonk droid. Yeah, the little power box droids. They got guns now. And they want your ass. Absolutely nothing in this game is messing around. There we go. If you've ever gotten through 
these gates without taking damage, you are a liar. You can't hurt those, you have to blast the... like the mooring out of them up there. You can see me kind of destroying it. There we go. And then they fall. Ions are pretty good for that. Homing works great too. Homing works great for everything though. Okay, we got most of our health back. As if that weren't enough, there is a timer on every stage. You'll notice that ticking up in the upper right. Which is great. These will kill you. Very fast. They hurt a lot. Fortunately, I think that's the end of those. Ow. Okay. Here's this thing, which I don't remember from the movies. He shoots from his arm cannon thingies and then barfs at you angrily. Now we have the final upgrade, Plasma. Plasma's really good. Plasma does a ton of damage, and that's about it. Got our health sword. They give you all of this, only to have you fall straight into instant death right there. It's a dick, dick move. Okay. Well, I touched lava and died. There you go. Lost all my power-ups. Uh, didn't time my pixel-perfect jump exactly. I hate this section of the game. It's so annoying. Oh, God. So we're going to keep doing that until we make that jump correctly. So good luck there, huh? All right. Oh, we did it. That's the first time I've ever made it through one of those. God forbid making it through all of them without ever taking damage. Yep, took damage there. Taking a lot of damage doing that, but at least it comes right back. Sometimes you can get an angle to reflect your shots there. The inside of the sand crawler is just very reflective, I guess. You know, how dirty metal is so reflective. The fact that my gun fires explosions is canon, however. That's what blasters fire. They fire a magnetically contained pocket of explosive gas. It's not a laser. There are lasers in Star Wars, but this is not one of them. Woo! Okay, that was pretty good. All right. Time to fight the boss again. The boss. I mean, I don't know what the hell he is. He, he horfs big fireballs at you. That's pretty great of him. It takes a long time to kill if you don't have a decent gun. Now I at least have a basic upgrade. They want to make sure you have full health for this instant death mechanic that's going to screw you in a second. Also, why is the Jawa Sandcrawler full of fucking lava? Nope. Oh, what the fuck just happened there? Why, why am I not dying? I'm touch... Okay, that time I died. In the interest of saving us all some time, I may just turn on invincibility for that part. Because, boy, that pixel-perfect platforming on a SNES is... It's a vibe. Mmm. Do not like it. That Jawa just threw a fucking thermal detonator through the goddamn wall at me. Threw it straight through the wall at me. This one here is a little rough because there's no good angle to hit it. Well, there might actually be. Yes, there is. Aha! I'm a genius. Okay. I didn't pick that up somehow. You see why I turned on Infinite Lives? Because uh, we'd be back to fighting the Sarlacc now from those deaths, I believe. 
And I don't want to do all that again. It's not very conducive to uh, being fun when you have limited lives in a game that has cheap-ass mechanics that kill you instantly. That heart's just gone. Ow. Chawas are badass, man. Look at all this shit. Okay, I don't know what this is. This is not in any movie that I saw. You jump when he fires his arm cannons, and you keep shooting when he horks fireballs at you. Because his hitbox doesn't change. Did he die? Good. Give me that blaster power-up. If I die this time, I'm turning on the invincibility for this part, because this is just the worst. The absolute worst bullshit that this game pulls right here is these pixel-perfect jumps. Yep. Okay. So, here's what's going to happen now. Give me a second. We'll turn it off after this part, but I hate this. Uh, shift. What is it? F1 for me? No, it's enter F1. Yeah. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. There we go. Where is that old cheat for lava doesn't hurt you, specifically? I think it's a bit of a buggy cheat, because it makes nothing hurt you, as far as I can tell. I <laughs> like you are invisible, but so are the enemies. What the hell? Uh, do, 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 do. Walk on lava unhurt. Turn that shit on. Also, uh, apply changes. All right. Yeah, nothing's actually hurting me now. So we're just going to get to the end of this stage because this is such a miserable set of jumps that I cannot abide it any longer. I have things to do, like record 15 other goddamn things. What is this? This is like stage four? Of about 15? I think I'll split this into 15. So split into about three, five stage episodes, probably. Get a look at how the sausage is made here. I'm just thinking out loud while I, I do this shit. That Darth Vader head is a score power-up. Remember when scores were a thing in video games? Man, it has been a time. All right, you. Where are you? Just die already, goddammit. You're the easiest thing in the game to fight, which is saying something, because you're actually kind of dangerous. Okay, there we go. Got my blaster. Get my goddamn health swords. All right. Yep, see, would have died again there, and you've been watching this all over again. Lovely. Damn, he Jawas. Oh, that would have died right there. Here's Lava Beast Jawenko. Uh, he's the lava monster that lives in the basement of the Sandcrawler. I mean, obviously, that's a thing that we had, right? Lava monster in the Sandcrawler? Sure! Uh, he, all these projectiles he fires will shove you off in the lava if you're hit by any of them. And he just fires them fucking randomly. He's a horrible boss. I hate him. Alright. And then you touch R2-D2 and you beat the stage. It's quite possible to touch that lava and die even after you've beaten the, the lava monster, Jawanko. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You are our only hope. Master Luke. R2-D2 is babbling about his mission. He says that he's the property of an Obi-Wan Kenobi, a resident of these parts, and he has a very important message for him. So, we're now like ten minutes into the movie, four stages in. Land of the Sand People. All right. Here's the one that's really bad, folks. This stage is terrible. Every stage after this, I like fine. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and turn off that cheat. Go back to just Infinite Lives. You see why Infinite Lives is not getting turned off here, because this game is full of bullshit jumps and things. And you only have, like, four lives, and then a few continues, and then you start all over. 
And we love starting all over in a Let's Play. Okay, uh, apply changes. There you go. All right. So yeah, just in the interest of doing this, I give myself infinite lives. You shoot the frogs, you, they leave goo, and then you're like, eh, that sucked. Eh, you can't jump in goo either. You have to walk through it. So we still got Jawas trying to kill us for no good goddamn reason. Bye, frog. Ah, ah, ah. Ah. One thing you cannot do in this game is fire downwards. Oh, good. I'm screwed. There's goo there. Okay. No, I made it. All right. Great. All right. Good. We got that health. God, I love homing. It is Dash Rindar's gun. It's a pistol that fires blaster shots and homing missiles. It's 100% Dash Rindar's gun. The only thing it's missing is that weird pink shit. The, the pink boba tea bubbles that came out. Ah, Womp Rats are back. That was a sand person, Tusken Raider. They run up to you and go, and hit you. And they deal fairly good damage. Also, even the damn cave is trying to kill me. Those stalactites wait to fall until you're near them. They're specifically aware of your presence and trying to kill you. Don't let that crush you to death, by the way. It's quite able to do that, if I recall. I don't remember for sure, but I wouldn't put it past it. Ooh, a health sword. Ah! Oh yeah, that hurts. Ouch. Okay, that definitely hurt. Now it's time for pixel-perfect jumping over collapsing platforms. At least, there's no enemies. You're stranded if you don't make that second jump there, incidentally. Okay, we made it over the pixel-perfect platforming. Come on, there you go. There we go. I'd still rather have this than any other weapon, like, upgrades-wise, like, because it's just doing so much more damage. And damage qu very quickly becomes king in this game. When enemies become giant health sponges. Even the tiny rock pieces hurt me. If you keep somehow collecting more Darth Vader heads, you get a increasingly larger points bonus. Which can give you extra lives, not that it matters, because all your lives will be lost to just getting knocked down a pit. Thermal detonator. Okay, time for more Pixel Perfect platforming. Except this time there's enemies. And yes, if you hit them, you will miss your jump and you will die. You have to know that's there, that platform that I just landed on. Yeah, you have no way of knowing that. And again, have to know that's there. Fuck you, game. I made it that time. That took me about 75,000 tries under my practice run. Tell me, young Luke, what brings you out this far? Ben Kenobi. Boy, am I glad to see you. Everything's trying to kill me. This little droid has an important message for you. Well, little fellow, let us see what you have. General Kenobi, years ago you served my father in the Clone Wars. Now he begs you to help him in his struggle against the Empire. I have placed information vital to the survival of the Rebellion into the memory system of this R2 unit. You must see this droid safely delivered to him on Yavin. This is our most desperate hour. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You are our only hope. Luke, you must help me rescue the Princess. Here is your lightsaber. It is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. No, I'm sorry. Here's your health saber, Obi-Wan. Oh, my controller freaked out for a second there. You probably see that in the recording. Okay, so now I've got my health saber. You can switch between weapons. I can keep using my vastly superior gun. Use four, Luke. Love that voice clip. Flawless. Use four, Luke. Lightsaber kills shit pretty fast. I think it does as much damage as the plasma, which is appropriate because it is a beam of plasma. But uh, we're going to fight some Banthas here in the land of the Banthas. You just lightsaber them in the face. 
And Banthas are full of nitroglycerin, because that fucker goes up. Oh, good. Another health sword like my father used. Yo, oh, other, other kerosene Bantha. Boom. I wish that explosion killed the enemies, too. Ooh, more time. Something you never really need in this game, because the time is adequate. Another Bantha! They are very hard to kill without the lightsaber, incidentally. Don't bother shooting them. Even with, like, plasma, you won't kill them in, a, in any reasonable time period. Just, just lightsaber the shit out of them. Lightsaber didn't even kill him in one hit. This thing should be a one-hit kill, man. Oh, also, if you uh, do a spinning jump here, you it's an attack. Which is a nice feature. I appreciate that. Also, you can crouch down and kind of get up there. You can also do little weird swingy jobs here. Oh, tells me to go that way. Thank goodness for that, or you just jump right off that damn thing. It's over here, anyway. Huh. No, there's not... Doesn't appear to be anything there. There's probably a secret there that I don't know about. Game has quite a few of them. The Mutant Womp Rat! Must be responsible for the 8 trillion Womp Rats that attack me. Look at that slowdown. Oh, yeah. And we're out of here. I think that was five stages, so I think we're done for the moment. Uh, I will see you all in the next episode after this cutscene. There's no cutscene. We're back in our damn land speeder. All right. I will see you all next time. Thank you for watching this insanity. <laughs> we'll be back with some more Super Star Wars shortly. Bye-bye for now.